Hey, my name is Isaac Oster. I'm a lead technical artist in the games industry. I've been doing a deep dive on everything landscape in Unreal 5.5 and Gaia 2, and I'm excited to share a few helpful tips and tricks with you. This tutorial series covers everything you need to know to begin building landscapes with Gaia and Unreal. It covers how to generate both height maps and tiling static meshes in Gaia, how to set up a landscape actor, and how to build a layered landscape material with nanite displacement using Quixel Megascans, the texture graph, and Gaia texture data. Let's jump in. All right, so here we are in Gaia 2. You can see the license here. I'm at uh, 2.0.4.2 Indie. And what that means is I can export textures at a resolution of up to 4K. The free version is limited to 1K. Uh, that's a little bit important, but uh, you can make a decision whether or not it's worth upgrading if you haven't already. Uh, you can export height maps up to 4K with the free version. So you can actually get a lot of important data out without having to spend any extra money. So down here, this is our graph area. We have some attributes that we can modify for each node that's selected. This is another way of looking at the graph. When you're ready to export stuff, you can look at your build settings here. This little button right here will give you access to how you want to export the various nodes. And you can look at your, your data that you're generating here. So you can see I click on this little green circle there. I can go to visualize data. And it's going to look a little bit different because right now I have this color node selected. If I wanted to grab one of these geometry nodes down here, you can see that data is represented as a grayscale image because it's actually showing the height displacement here. So we'll get into some of this in a little more detail shortly. You can toggle the sky off and on, and you can change the position and brightness of the sun without the realistic render, though. That's not really going to be showing it too much. You can also change the resolution. This is actually uh, has a, a significant impact on performance. So while I'm doing the demo, I'm going to leave it at 1K. And then if you wanted to see what the final result is, you can bump it up to 2K or 4K. So let's go ahead and build something from scratch now to explore how some of the stuff fits together down in the graph section. We're going to begin by looking here in terrain and then landscape and canyon. It's going to add a canyon node. Once that loads in, I can also just right click over here and type in part of the word canyon and it'll pop up. Let's zoom in just a bit. So I have two canyons here. And if you look over here in the parameters, what you'll notice is they are almost identical. The only thing that's different between the two is the seed. So the seed is going to be a random number that gives you a, a similar but different result. So if you if you want to if you like how something looks and you want to just give it a little bit of a, of a different output then you can just change the seed to some other number and you will get a different value right okay so there are a variety of different things that we can modify with the the canyon node here we can change the scale and if i modify that you'll see what the result is a very low value gives you basically a straight line with a whole lot of stuff going on on that line and a larger value is going to give you a much more diffuse canyon right so something in the middle might make sense there if i wanted to reset any of these values i can right click and then either type a value in directly or i can hit this little icon here which will set it back to its default value we can look at the effect of reducing the slot value that's going to basically make everything a little more level on the top if i increase the slot value it's going to spread it out a bit right so this is kind of a nice look because you can you can get this uh, flat plane with a, a ring of sort of mountainous stuff around it. Let's go back to something a little closer to the default. We can get a similar look here playing with valley, right? Start to get that same kind of idea. All right, and there's some other things in here you can play with depth and, and see what we've talked about. So a very important thing that you can do here, I'm just going to duplicate this node, just a control D there, and I'm going to change the seed. So now I have a similar but different result. I want to combine these, but before I combine them, I want to rotate this one so that the mountains are on this side and the flat area is over here. So I can pull off from out and type in transform. And in the transform node, I have this option here of setting the angle. So I'm going to right click and type in 90. You can see on the very edge, we're going to get a little bit of stretching, but we don't need to worry too much about that. So now I need to combine these. So I'm going to pull off of the top one, type in the word combine, and then plug from the out of the transform into the, the bottom here of combine. And you can see now 
I'm getting an average of those two inputs. There are a lot of different ways that you can change the result that you're getting. And it, a lot of it is going to look a little bit similar to Photoshop if you're comfortable with that tool. I'm going to go ahead and set this to visualize data so we can see what this looks like for the first canyon. Where it's lighter, the geometry is going to be displaced upwards, and where it's darker, it's going to be lowered. Middle gray is going to be left alone. So you can see we have these two very similar results. We do a transform, and then when we combine them, we can either blend them, we can add them together, we can do a screen, we can do a multiply, subtract, and so on. And if I actually set this to realistic render, you can begin to get a sense for what those results look like. You can get a little bit of clipping here, do an add, do a blend, so on and so forth, right? You can also change the relative impact of the inputs. So if you want a little bit more from one than the other, then you can go ahead and set that up very easily here by modifying the ratio value. I'm going to set this back to 0.5. So there are a variety of other options here in our terrain. We have a crater field. I'll just add a few to, to show you kind of what they look like. Oh, we can do plates. And the, the sort of the nature of this tool is you kind of got in and play with a little bit. I'm not going to be able to cover everything here. Yeah, rugged. And they all have their own their own parameters that you can modify. Uh, we'll look at one more here, the slump. So it's just some bumpy mountainy looking thing, right? And these are all again here in terrain landscape. They've got primitives as well. Uh, you can do a crater, which looks a lot more simple because again, it is a primitive. And then we can do oh mountainside. So the mountainside, it's got a lot going on. You can play with some of the, the style stuff here. And this is actually how I built the piece of geometry that's a static mesh as opposed to a, a height map. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these. I'm actually going to keep mountainside around, get rid of slump, and we don't need this stuff anymore. So once you've got a piece of geometry that you are kind of happy with in terms of the overall shape, the next thing we can look at here is going to be surface. In surface, there are going to be a lot of interesting things that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and we will look at, we can do craggy. And what you notice is if I just add a, a craggy node, it doesn't do anything because it needs an input. So I'm going to plug from mountainside into craggy, let it process. And here you can see the result. Craggy is an excellent name, right? This is exactly what it looks like. So with craggy, again, there's going to be some things that you can modify. If I wanted to make them a little bit smaller, less deep, change the shape a little bit, whatever. But if I wanted them to only occur at a certain height or a certain slope, there's an easy way to control that. I'm going to click down here on this little icon and you can see uh, there's a mask by slope and a mask by height option. So I'm going to select height and you can see here it's only showing up in kind of the middle space, right? And that is reflected by this window here. I can make it, you know, a wider window and I can drag the whole thing. If I hold the shift key, you can move it in pretty much real time, which is a neat impact there. Let's add one more. I'm going to just continue on the train. We're going to do a sandstone. Sandstone is also here in surface. And the sandstone is going to give you these uh, striations, this layered effect. And you can increase the passes and the iterations, which will take a bit of time, but it's going to punch a little bit more detail in. Pick up the iterations. All right. And let's go ahead and do another one of those mask by height. I'm going to hold shift so I can move the whole thing. I just kind of walk it down. So it's kind of in the middle there. So that's looking interesting. The next thing that's very important here, and there's a lot of other stuff in Surface that's definitely worth exploring. Well, maybe I'll do, I'll do one more. So this rock noise here, we'll just throw a rock noise in. And this one doesn't need anything to be uh, an input, but obviously without something else, this is going to be a flat plane. So I'm going to plug in from there and that will give us some bumpy stuff. And once again, I'm going to add a mask by height, and this I just want at the top. 
So we just get a little bit of break up there at the top and that's lovely. All right, so there's a lot more stuff in here. It's all definitely worth playing with, but before we spend too much more time worrying about the surface, the next thing I wanna do is look at simulate. There's a few erosions. There's gonna be easy erosion, erosion, and erosion two. Easy erosion, once again, it's gonna re require some inputs. We'll just go ahead and plug it in. And it's gonna just give you this erode stuff. It doesn't have too many details. You can just pick from some presets, hence the, the easy part. Can't take a little bit of time. I'll let that kind of process, whatever. You, you can kind of see the result there. The ones I like are, I think, exposed, rocky. I don't want it to be too intense. You can reduce the influence, obviously, but it's pretty melty, right? So we can grab erosion two. If you do erosion one, it, or just a regular erosion, it'll, it'll kind of say like, this is an old node. You should, you should try erosion two. So I'm gonna just grab the duration and walk it back. So you can kind of get back to effectively your, your original state or very close to it. But you can see we're starting to get some nice deposits, some erosion, all that is very, very lovely. You can change the scale. If you reduce it, you'll get lots of little rivets. And if you make it larger, you'll just get some, some bigger ones. Down cutting is gonna be like how deep those little trenches are. So that can be a, a nice thing to control as well. And then there's other stuff that you can play with. Right, but uh, we're kind of just showing a few a few options. Okay, so I think we're probably at about time for this video, and the next one we'll talk about how to colorize this. So stick around for that.